This is it, people. This is what you've been waiting for. This is Everyday Celebrity Podcast. The podcast for everyday people with everyday problems trying to find everyday solutions to accomplish everyday goals. Let's start the show. You, 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 you. Welcome to another episode of Everyday Celebrity Podcast, number one podcast in Oakland, the number one podcast in the Bay Area. Tonight we have another great episode, another great host, and we have a we have. <laughs> I wouldn't say great, but we have a guest (laughs) tonight. You should put a nice adjective in front of that. Gretchen, welcome to the show. (laughs) How are you? I would say good, but I feel like I just got a little bit roasted, but it's fine. I'm doing great. That's good. That's good. How is your night going? Honestly, good. Um, although it was a little bit hectic. Do you mean to tell you what happened right before I came here? Please do. I was in my car coming over here, and I remembered that I forgot to feed my coworker's cat. I had to go take care of that really fast. And then as I was driving after that little errand, I accidentally dumped my entire mug of tea over my pants. So then I had to stop at home and change my entire outfit. So mm. it's good now, but it was chaotic for a minute there. So your house sitting or something? No, I'm just feeding a cat. Cat sitting. Cat sitting. But cats don't really need to be sat. You just go feed them, talk to them. Yeah, I don't understand why uh, people... Um, when they go out of town, they need someone to watch the cat. Cats are meant to, they probably to like leave it. alone. Cats probably enjoy this, the quiet. I mean, it's more just like, you know, a wellness check. Make mm. sure the cat's still alive. Mm. Give it some food. You know, say yeah. hi. Are you from uh, San, Di- oh, no. <laughs> San Diego? I San wish. Francisco. No, I live in San Francisco, but I'm originally from Indiana, mm. which in case you don't know where that is, it's in like the middle Midwest, middle of the country. What which, part of uh, Indiana? South side of Indianapolis area. Yeah. That's where you grew up? Born and raised. Mm. What brought you here? Um, I wanted to do something different and I got a job offer. So I said yes and moved out here. Actually, I just celebrated my four-year move anniversary, which is not really a thing, but I'm trying to make it a thing because oh, yeah. I think life needs more celebration. So, What was life like in Indiana for you? Um, I grew up on a farm. So, honestly, I, I mean, I had a great life. I, yeah, I had a lot of, I grew up, grew up with my family, my cousins, siblings, small town vibes. How's that chocolate milk? It's amazing. I love chocolate milk. I do too. Okay, but wait. <clears throat> what is your favorite kind of chocolate milk? This kind. Exactly that kind. Crystal, for anyone who's listening. Sponsor. Get that sponsorship. Yeah. Crystal <laughs> <laughs> Crystal Creamery. No Nesquik? No Hershey syrup? No, no, no. That shit tastes. I'm a chocolate. You know how they have wine connoisseurs? Your chocolate milk connoisseur. Mm-hmm. Okay, what's second to crystal? Nothing. It's crystal and nothing else. Dang. So I definitely need that sponsorship. Yeah, honestly. All right, your life. Continue. Um. What well, you said? You grew up on a farm. What kind of farm? Like you got pigs and shit, horses. Pigs. Our neighbors had horses, which was always great. I always wanted a horse, but I'm way too lazy to take care of an animal that big. So, mm. um, yeah, we 
Yeah, had a farm with pigs and crop. But, like, we didn't really have that, like, the animals on our farm, like, on our house, at our house. They were, like, down the road. So. You grew up in, uh, your parents were married? Mm-hmm. You're still together? No. Well, yeah, they were until my mom passed away six years ago. And mm-hmm. so my parents, yeah, they they were married and together the whole time. How did she pass away? She had cancer. Breast cancer? Fucking ovarian cancer, man. <laughs> I mean, that's nothing yeah. to laugh at about you. What? Ovarian cancer. Yeah. Mm. Um, How old were you when she passed? I was 26. So, semi recent I mean, recently-ish. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I was 22 when she got diagnosed. And then, yeah, she passed away at 26. When I was 26, she was 56. So, yeah. Was, uh, did your dad get remarried? No, he hasn't. My dad, my parents were definitely like, they loved each other a lot. It was like. They were like high school sweethearts and shit. My mom would always say she remembers chasing my dad around like the kindergarten table and being like, I love this boy, you know. Mm. So, um, but I think my dad is dating, but he hasn't got remarried and he said he's not going to get remarried. How old is your dad? He's now 61. How would you feel if he got remarried? I mean, I feel like when I feel like it just complicates things a little bit and, but I want my dad to be happy. So like, if that's what makes him happy, what do you mean complicate things? I don't know. It's like when you're an adult, like when you're, you know, on another marriage or, you know, you had, I mean, I feel like had the marriage you wanted, then you can still be with someone without the title of marriage and not have to like merge your entire lives together, you know, officially. It sounds like you are pretty selfish. <laughs> <laughs> that you don't want your dad to be happy. No, I do want him to be happy. So he, what if he wants to be married? Then, yeah. But he said, I mean, he said before my mom died and he said since that he doesn't want to get remarried. So. Mm. I mean, of course, I do. I want my dad to be happy. Has he ever introduced, like, brought around another woman? Yeah. In front of you guys? Yeah. You have uh, sisters and brothers? I have an older sister and a younger brother. Uh, so. How's that dynamic? Oh, great. I love my siblings. I You're mean, a- my sister and I used to fight real bad, and mostly she hated me, but my brother and I have always been cool. And my sister and I are incredibly close now, so mm. we talk all the time. Are any of them married? They're both married, and they both have kids. Yeah. How many kids? My sister has two kids, and my brother has one kid. Uh, okay. Yeah. You've never been married, right? Not yet. Would you like the black sheep of the, the family? I mean, obviously, because if you take a single, unmarried, 31-year-old woman in Indiana, they're going to think I'm like a witch or something. Mm-hmm. There's something deeply wrong with me, of course, because yeah. I'm not married. So they don't make me feel that way, but I also was like, can we not keep having this conversation? So, mm-hmm. yeah. What was the name of the, the town you lived in again? So I'm at like, the town I live in is like called Needham, but it's very, very small. So I usually say Greenwood because it's a larger suburb. What was, what was that town like? Needham? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, there's like nothing there. I'm saying, what was it like though? It was like uh, shit on the movies where like everyone knows each other and shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a small farming community, and so, yeah, I feel like everybody kind of knows each other. Everybody's lived mm. where they have their whole life. Um, yeah, people. Was it a racist town? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was your family racist? I mean, some of my family members, yeah. Yeah? Who? I'm not saying that. Why? No. You don't believe racist people should be outed? I do, but um, I've already caught a lot of grief for severing some of those relationships, and I don't feel the need to drag them publicly on a platform. <laughs> uh, are they... Let me, let me, let's see how... <laughs> you don't have to say their names, but like, where in the family are they? Are they like on your... I'm not saying that. Uh, okay. So you grew up in a racist town... <laughs> What uh, 
After high school, what what happened after high school? Did you stay in, in the town, to go to no. college? After high school, I went to college and I went to school in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. So moved out. Yeah. Did you always want to like, you know how when you're growing up, you're like, oh, I don't fit in. <laughs> There's something about me. I don't fit in to this, to this town. You know what I'm saying? There's like people who like grow up in small towns. I have dreams of mm-hmm. being in New York and there's yeah. nothing about me that that's like that says I belong here. Were you like that? Yeah, I mean, I I do. I love where I grew up and I I mean, it's more about the people like that are there, mm-hmm. but I do I always felt like I was going to leave. And I remember having conversations with my mom around that like you know, are you going to come visit me if like wherever I land? And she was like, yeah, but you know, the further you move out, the further, like the harder it's going to be. Mm-hmm. But actually it was cool when I went home, I was home in July for my niece's birthday and I was going through some old like elementary school work. And I found this book that had, you know, it was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Where do you want to live? And like, as a second gra- grader, I had written that I want to be a photographer and I want to live in California. And so it was like a cool little moment to be like, oh, I'm like doing those things. And yeah. So I mm-hmm. think, yeah, I definitely knew I wouldn't be there. What was the name of the college that you went to? And it's now called Johnson University. But yeah, it was called something different when I started. In Tennessee? Mm-hmm. Why'd you pick that school? Because I had some friends that went there. Mm. Um, it was affordable and at the time it fit like what I thought I wanted to do with my life. So what did you want to do at that time? At that time I wanted to, I mean, really I wanted to like live overseas and do some kind of like nonprofit work, Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I ended up going to school for like intercultural studies with a focus on urban studies. But also, I got like a Bible degree. So, a Bible degree. Mm hmm. The fuck is that, man? Exactly. Just like you're studying the Bible? Pretty much. So, you can teach people about the Bible? Uh, I guess that's what I thought I was going to do. I don't know. Were you religious? I was, yeah. I mean, I grew up very Christian. Like, mm. yeah. Are you still religious? That's a complicated question. I. <laughs> so yes or no? No, I'm not religious. I would say I'm spiritual, but I don't, yeah, religion, I don't really know what I subscribe to. Mm. I'm trying to figure that out. Why can't people just be like, I don't subscribe to sh- to nothing? Why is that so hard to say? I think for me, part of it is like, I've had some experiences where it feels like there is something else going on. And then there is an element of, my mom and then like losing a few other people like my uncle and just like kind of needing something to have a belief that there is something else because Mm. you feel like you need to believe that there's something else. I want to. Do you think people need to believe in that because they're want, they don't want to face the fact that when you die, you just die and that's it. I don't know if it's necessarily that or if, Honestly, I just think there's so much suffering in the world that we as humans experience that if you have something that can kind of bring you peace and help you have hope and move throughout like the, your life, then why is that a bad thing? Mm. Yeah. And I'm fine. I mean, you know, once I die, I, I'll, I'll figure out what happens. But like, <laughs> I'm not Nothing's like, going to happen. You're just dead. I mean, for sure. But I don't know. I think... And maybe it won't happen, but I do. I really hope that I do get to see my mom again. And, you know, that kind of thinking about dying can be really scary. And so thinking about dying and then having people to like greet you on the other side is like a very beautiful thing. But again, I don't fucking know what's going to happen. Did you go through like a depression phase when your mother passed? (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm. I was just like a shell of a person, honestly, for like four or five years. Mm. Um, yeah, I fell apart big time. Have you ever got checked for like cancer? Um, actually I had a cancer scare myself 
And that was like not fun. But like what? Breast cancer? No, thyroid cancer. What? Thyroid cancer. Thyroid? Oh. Mm-hmm. Does cancer run in your family? Mm-mm. Mm. No, and actually my mom got tested and she didn't have the genetic markers for mm. to like carry on. So me and my sister felt pretty relieved by that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would too. <laughs> um when you were in college, right? Mm-hmm. You did you do only do four years or did you Yeah, I just did four years. You didn't want to continue? I didn't really like I didn't like school that much. Mm. I like the social aspect of it. And I like doing all the fun stuff, like, you know, clubs or sports. But, mm. like, I don't know. Learning to basically take tests just was not, like, fun mm. for me. What type of person were you when you were in college? I mean, basically what I'm saying is the the girl that you were in high school, right? And then when you went to college, were you that same person? Or did college change you? I feel like... I was very similar, but in college, I feel like I definitely let like had more fun and like was more goofy. Mm. Whereas in high school, I felt like I was very like sh- very. Um, I was all about the rules, and in college, I was like, mm, we can have a little more fun. Is that probably because you had more freedom? More freedom, I think. Also, confidence in myself, mm. like feeling like you get to be somewhere where. Nobody knows you, and you can just, yeah, be who you are. Did you experience, did you start experiencing with, like, drugs, alcohol, sex when in college? Nope. I did not. (laughs) So you were a virgin in college? (laughs) I was. Wow. I don't believe that. Were you a virgin in college? No. Were you a virgin in high school? No. Were you a virgin in middle school? No. What? What? Yeah, I was a what they call a rolling stone back I don't in really the days. Know what that means. It means I was twelve and I was dating twenty year olds. Mm. I'm joking. I was like, we're gonna we're about to I'm about to become the host real quick. <laughs> but uh so you didn't dabble in none of none of that in college. That's that's good. Why is that? I mean, I went to like a very like a conservative Christian school. And so mm. like a lot of that stuff wasn't allowed. I mean, people were, well, you can figure out ways. But yeah, I think- those are like the main, those are like the main uh, wild people. Those fucking overly secluded, like Christian girls and shit. Mm-hmm. Those are the, like the wildest chicks. <laughs> because they're so, they, they grow up in a, in a box. Yeah. And then when you throw them out to the outside world, they're like, God damn, all this shit is coming at me left and right. Boys, drugs, clubs, parties, drinking. They don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And then once they get a taste of that, they just spiral out of control. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think some of it was like, I... Like, I don't know if you've had this experience. I'm sure... Hopefully you have, but it's like when you're young and you're just having like pure fun, like Mm. there's nothing else going on. I mean, maybe you've had sugar, but like, it's just like pure fun. You're goofing around with your friends. Like you have no cares in the world. Like that's what college kind of felt like. Like, I just feel like I fell in with people that like were just really fun and also like real. And so we'd be having like real conversations about things, but then also like just acting like such idiots and having like the most fun. Mm. And so it kind of felt like I didn't really, I don't know. I feel like I didn't really miss that. But I also, I mean, at the time, I guess my parents were like very laid back and like cool people. So, I mean, if I wanted to drink, I could just drink when I would go home. And actually my parents like took me out for my 21st birthday. So like it was a good time. Took took you out to like drink? What? Took you out to drink? Yeah. Uh, yeah, my parents were a good time. My mom was a good ass time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I'll find it. I'll, I, I, it'll be weird for me to like to drink with my with my mom. I don't right. even cuss in front of my mom. Okay, so you're like my best friend. She literally, she would not cuss in front of her mom. Mm. She would not drink. 
And then she would come to my house and my mom would be like, I got you this bottle of wine. And Brooke's like, I can't, like, I can't take this <laughs> home. And I'm like, gosh, just, mm. just do it. What year did you graduate? 2014. Yeah. With uh, what degree? It was a BS in intercultural studies, urban intercultural studies. Study. Did you have a, like a job lined up? No. So I ended up taking a job recruiting for the university for the summer because mm. I didn't know what I was going to do. And then, yeah, that's kind of like two weeks before my contract ended is like when my mom like found out that she had cancer. And so then it kind of like flipped my entire life plan and what I was doing. Did you move back home mm-hmm. to be with her? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, and honestly, I was like, okay, I'll just, like, move back and be here until my mom gets better. And then, like, four weeks after my mom got diagnosed, her brother, who my uncle, we like, was very close with, he, like, very suddenly passed away. And so then it just kind of felt like I just need to be with my family right now. Like, mm. I need to be here. And I was, like, working odd jobs at the time. But, yeah, I was just, like, with my family. Um, you obviously left to go to college and you moved back for that specific reason. Um, but how was it when you moved back? Cause obviously you were a changed person now and having to go back to a small racist town. <laughs> how, I mean, how, how was that? I mean, at the t- honestly, I feel like there wasn't, I mean, it was hard period because of everything else that was going on. Mm-hmm. But then it is like, you take yourself away from your friends, your community, like a walkable, you know, place to live. Mm. And, you know, I think anyone would have a hard time with that in general, but then with everything else, it was just like, it was hard, but I feel like I don't really remember an adjustment period. I just remember being like, okay, this is like where I need to be. Yeah. When did you leave? uh... Indiana. Mm -hmm. I moved in October of 2019. Here? Mm. And what was the reason for that? It was like a year after my mom died, and I just kind of felt like I needed like a fresh start. But why California? Um. Well, I got a job here, but mm. I also was like, oh, I've always wanted to live in California, so mm. here we go. Did you ever visit before you moved here? I had visited San Francisco once in college for like a day, mm. and... I mean, it was fine, but I never, you know, I never thought I would live here, but. San Francisco is crazy because, you know, when you, when you look at San Francisco, right, when you see San Francisco on TV, like think of, think of uh, watching a drone, like you're looking at a drone and you see the city, right? Damn, look at all these buildings and shit. Like you're flying an airplane, like looking at the city, but then. You know how when Google Maps you 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 fucking uh what's what a word zoom what, in yeah you zoom in it's like zooming into San Francisco and then you're like okay okay god damn and then you're like you see in the streets and like drugs and needles everywhere and like <laughs> homeless people and you and then you zoom out you're like oh this is beautiful and then you zoom back in and you're like getting into like the nooks and crannies of the city. So a lot of people think like San Francisco is like, oh, this is an amazing place. Like you're you're right here on this one block where these million billion dollar houses and shit are. Then you walk down the street around the corner, you're like in a tender line. Mm-hmm. How was that adjustment for you? Well, again, I moved here. It was October. So, I mean, actually the first night I moved into my apartment, I had a um a homeless person come up and was like he I don't know who he was looking for not me because literally I just moved there that day but (laughs) he was like banging on the door and threatening and it was like one in the morning and I was just like banging on your door "Mm -hmm." I was like oh shit what did I get myself into and um but I don't know I think so yeah I moved here in October and then it was like four months later the pandemic hit and it just like Mm. nothing was happening and I would like go on a lot of walks in San Francisco and things like that and so I feel like I got to see a different kind of version of the city before you know what we see now did you ever regret moving 
I didn't, I didn't, I haven't had regrets, but I definitely have had a lot of low moments where I'm just like, what did I do? Or did I make a mistake? Mm. Like, or like, why did I, like, why did I fight so hard to stay here kind of thing? What job did you get when you moved there? I worked for a nonprofit. You're doing what? Doing like, <laughs> what? Huh? What? What were you doing? So I was working like at a church doing like community kind of stuff. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Was this like a secret thing you can't talk about? I like how we're talking about. It's complicated. Uh, Are you selling drugs or something? No. Oh my gosh, no. Okay. Don't make it weird. You don't make it weird. (laughs) Do you still, are you still doing that job? I'm doing a different job, mm-hmm. but at, like in the same kind of realm. Mm. Mm. Okay. Do you like it? No. So why are you doing it? Because I, I think for a long time, a part of me had a really hard time accepting that it was like this is not what I wanted to do anymore and kind of having like the grief of that and like you know the realization of like oh I have an entire college degree on this I've like based so much of my decisions around this I've spent so much time doing this Mm -hmm. and you know when you are thinking about like switching careers or like ending like that's it's hard and what was the original question why are you doing something you don't oh. that you hate? But I also think that I was so there were so many things in my life that I needed to kind of have some healing to even be able to think about what I want to do and like have the drive to go for it. Uh-huh. So I think yeah, just having a job that you know you can do and that allows you to pay your bills and gives you, you know, insurance. Mm. Um, that's okay, but are you are you the type of person who won't do something because like are you scared of the unknown? Yeah, mm. yeah, because I think the last time, so previously, what was that like a couple of years ago? I had lost my job because of COVID and Mm. that sent me into an unknown and it was not good. It was granted. I think there were some other things going on that like impacted how I was feeling, but I think that was hard because that was the first time in a long time where I was thrust into a situation that a lot of things were out of my control. And no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't like seem to make things go my way. Um, and so that feels like scary to be like, okay, well, I walk away from this what if things get worse Mm. but you also at some point have to decide to take the risk and leap of faith when was the last time you took a risk Mm. I mean it's been a couple years I've really, really taken a big risk. Mm. I feel like I'm about to make one, so. <laughs> you want to tell me about it? Mm-hmm. No? Okay. Not today. <laughs> this is coming out tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. No, I can't talk about it today. So, um, <clears throat> so you move here, you get a job. Was the transition, uh, like, was it was it easy for you to find, like, community? Did you... When I, when I said community, did you make a lot of friends really fast? Did you find like a a, a good gym to go to? Did you like did you? Oh, this is my coffee shop now, mm-hmm. like that type of shit. Yeah, I felt like I definitely. Yeah, I was like had my gym, had some friends here. I feel like I was making friends at work, and then. So you you already you already knew people here before you moved. I knew like one like a yeah a few people here. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah, and then, like, the people I lived with also became my friends. So, 
But yeah, then a lot of that like came to a screeching halt because I thought I was yeah going to be going out to all these things and meeting people and then the pandemic hit. And so I was like, oh shit, mm. um, none of that happened. So mm. did the pandemic, uh, I mean, it, it affected people's lives differently. How did it affect yours? Um, I mean, I lost my job and then I also got COVID and that was really rough and I had like a long COVID experience. Mm. And so, um, yeah, for me, it kind of sucked. <laughs> not as much as others, but it definitely was not good. Mm -hmm. well, how was your experience? Uh, I mean, it didn't affect me at all. I mean, I still had to. Must be nice. I still had to work, so nothing changed. Were you an essential worker? Mm hmm Electrician? Mm hmm Keep the lights on. Yeah. I kind of want the, the pandemic to come back. Those there were, was moments where it was Those were like, good days. People were thriving, just chilling. Oh, I was... That's what reconnected me to, like, my art, because I had time to do it. Mm hmm And just, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah let's talk about your... Uh, I mean, obviously, you have a nine to five, and and you do photography on the side, right? Mm -hmm. But you have your own what photography business? Yeah. Explain. Yeah. So I actually that, that's what I was doing in Indiana. I was yeah I was pretty much focusing on weddings and some like yeah family and like senior and engagement photos. Mm -hmm. But I was doing that and then. Yeah, I was like, when my mom died, I just also realized I was so burnt out from that. And yeah, being a business owner and doing everything yourself and just like, I was just tapped out. But yeah, I started a photography business. Gosh, I shot my first wedding when I was like 18 and I loved it. So I... Yeah, after my mom died, I pretty much took a break for like three years. And then, yeah, during the pandemic, I started kind of feeling more creative. And then, yeah, in the last like year and a half, I picked up my camera and felt like really excited again by it. So, mm. uh, yeah, Gretchen Robert's photo. Why uh, why photography? What What is it about photography that you love so much? I think it was, like, the first art form that I really got. I mean, music was probably the first art form. But, like, photography was the first art form that I, like, I felt like I had full, like, what's the word? Full range to just, like, figure it out, like, play with it. Mm. My mom was, like, always, she was a really good photographer. And she always had, like, a really nice camera. So she would kind of let me... I mean, at the time, it was only uh, she had film. So I wasn't allowed to shoot very often because film was kind of expensive. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It just felt like you think of how you want something to look in your mind and then you use it on, you take the camera and then you make it and then you have a physical thing of something you had in your mind. Like, I don't know. It's just like very cool to me. You never had... Uh like any, uh, I don't know, like training for photography? You're just self-taught? I, I'm like, I would say like 90% self-taught. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like took a couple classes in high school. And that's where I was like, oh shit, this is like really fun. Especially like doing film and developing your own film in the dark room. Like, mm -hmm. ugh. Oh, you, you do that? Okay. Not yet, but I want uh, to. But... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I've, like, you know, I've gone to classes or taken, like, workshops or, like, you know, YouTube University. But, yeah, for the most part, just figuring it out. Mm. What, um, I don't know, do you have, like, a, uh, I mean, I love basketball, right? Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan is someone I study. Yes. Everyone says I play like him. Oh. You know what I'm saying? But Wait, give us a Michael Jordan fact. Right now. I mean, well, he was, a lot of people don't know he was born in New York. Did you know that? I just learned right now. Yeah. There you go. Where at in New York? Brooklyn. Mm. What year was he born? 
1970. I almost One. wore my Michael Jordan sh- my Michael Jordan shirt tonight, but I didn't want you to give me shit for it, so mm. I chose not to. Should have. Well, I mean, way better. what? It have made the interview way better. <laughs> I just don't want to get roasted by Michael Jordan's number one fan, so you know. Okay, good. Well, anyway, yeah. What was I saying? Yeah, Michael Jordan is someone I uh, look at like. The way he played basketball, I study him. Do you have any people or anyone in the photography world Mm -hmm. that you, like, study? I used to have a radar on more, like, on a few people, but I feel like the last couple years I've kind of pulled back from, like, following an artist because I just... For a while, I feel like I, it was all about just copying whatever somebody was doing or mm-hmm. like, I don't know. It just, it and that made it a lot less fun. I definitely feel like I have artists that inspire me and, or I just really appreciate the work they're doing or the way of which they like craft a shoot. So, um, but I feel like I'm trying to expand my portfolio. So I'm trying to look at people who do work differently than me. Mm. Um but I know I don't have a specific person right now that I'm like. It's kind of hard to like copy someone photography wise, right? Because it's not like you're all, everyone's taking the same fucking picture of the same thing. Yeah, that's true. So, I, don't, I don't know how, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, just like, I don't know. I think it's like, move, I mean, trends or in anything right but Mm. I think for a while it was like especially in like the wedding photography industry it was like the same the trend was the same the style was the same like the poses were the same or like yeah I just wasn't everybody was because of you know a few photographers that say like this is the this is the way to do it so then everybody would do it and it was like uh you do mostly like wedding pictures and shit right not anymore I'm trying to pivot away from that yeah, I mean, well, you, yeah. is that, I mean, that's, I'm assuming that's how you started your business? Doing My that? first ever paid shoot was a, a senior photo shoot. So I still did like a lot of senior, mm. high, senior in high school. Was this something that was just, that just fell upon you or? Yeah, I mean. I mean, did you, did you go into the game like, oh, I want to be a fucking wedding photographer? No, I. That was something when, yeah, the first person that offered me money to photograph, I, like, was, like, this is a thing. Like, Mm -hmm. because especially growing up in, like, a smaller country town, like, I just didn't know anyone that did stuff like that. And so it just didn't really cross my mind that I could do that. And then, I mean, yeah, people kept seeing my stuff and would offer me money. And then I was, like, oh, I think I could, like... (laughs) Do this. Do you ever take pictures at a wedding and be like, yeah, I don't, I can see this is not going to last? I mean, you can always read some interesting dynamics. Mm. Um, And yeah, I think sometimes you walk away being like, damn, hope, hope you guys figure it out. Was there any time where you took pictures at a wedding and then couple months later, their divorce? Not a couple months, but I do feel like the pandemic destroyed a, quite a few of my couples. <laughs> Which I don't understand how that can happen. Like, what do you people, mean? Like, there's a lot of people who say they like broke up during the pandemic because they, they were forced to be around each other. I'm like, okay, well, you guys weren't around each other before <laughs> the, the, the fucking pandemic? Like... That's I guess they, um, maybe the 10% they were around each other was fine, but mm. having to be around each other 100% just broke them. Are you interested or are you passionate about anything else besides photography? Um, yeah. I, I haven't really said this out loud to many people, but I definitely, I would love to become an herbalist. Mm. I'm fascinated with plants and like herbs and like, yeah, their medicinal purposes and yeah, 
I Why? think it's very fascinating. Why? Yeah. Because I think it's really cool that we have so many like just natural things that can help us with all kinds of ailments and I don't know. It's like you could literally grow it yourself. Like how cool is that? What do you do when you get sick? Well, I mean, it depends what kind of sick. I don't know. When you get when you catch a cold, what do you do? Do you take medicine or you just let your body heal? Honestly, it kind of depends on what's happening. Like if I, but period, number one, rest. You got to give yourself rest. If you're not feeling well, your body needs time to recover. Dang, you were chugging that chocolate milk. <laughs> you should have a straw. I'm just, wait, would you drink out of a straw? Do you yeah. drink out of straws? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it is manly to drink out of straws? Uh, I mean, I don't consider it manly or feminine. It's just a fucking straw. Great. I'm just asking because one time I was in a conversation and someone said it wasn't manly to drink out of a straw. And I was like, that makes no sense. Yeah, so I just needed to ask you that question. Like saying, it was like someone it was not manly to bite a banana. Like, <laughs> like, well, how else, how else are you going to eat it? Hmm? Are you going to chop it up? That's Actually, even more, I prefer that, that my even, bananas thinly sliced. I don't really like that. That even looks, if you want to talk about manly and feminine, that looks more feminine. Chopping a banana <laughs> up and then taking a fork and then just like. Oh, that's the best way to eat it. I saw somebody eating pizza, but they were cutting it, like slicing it like mm -hmm. with a knife and a fork. Can I please share that I, as a child, was wouldn't, I didn't like pizza. So I would literally scrape off the cheese. I would scrape off the sauce. And then I would literally take a knife and scrape off, like, any wet part of the bread and then just, like, eat it. What a psycho. Truly. Yeah, that is kind of weird. I know. But, okay, back to your original question. When I'm sick, I mean, I try to load up on my natural remedies, but then sometimes you got to call in the reinforcements, you know? What are the reinforcements? I mean, like. Dayquil or Nyquil or your doctor, I don't know, oh, depending yeah. on what's going on. I love me some Dayquil. That's the only thing I. Next sponsorship, Dayquil. Yeah, that's the only thing I uh, I use when I when I get sick when it would cold, just because it knocks me out to go to sleep. Okay, but my problem is that I for a few years was experienced this thing in the spring when I would get sick and then I would take Dayquil because I'm like, oh, I have a cold. Turns out it's allergies. So the next year when it happens, I'm like, okay, it's allergies. Mm. No, it's a cold. That happened like four years. And mm. I'm like, I can't figure this out. Have you ever, ever heard of uh, Dr. Sebi? Mm, maybe if I saw a picture. Yeah, it's this old black guy, right? And he was a herbalist. And he said that, well, it's been proven that he cured. He cured people with cancer and he cured people with AIDS through natural uh, yeah. medicines. So and, that's... And he was murdered. Well, some people say he was assassinated because the... Uh, yeah, big the, pharma. The, the, yeah, the industry didn't want... Him the getting, masses... Mm -hmm. the, the industry didn't want the masses to learn that, oh, this shit is curable through just, like, natural shit. Oh, because, yeah. obviously... There's so much they money They want you to in... keep... Keeping people sick. Yeah. They just, they just, uh, I just read an article that said, uh, they finally said Tylenol is pointless. Great. And everyone, so glad everyone I've been using that. <laughs> when you get a pain in your bag, you, what do you, what do people say? Oh, take a Advil or Tylenol. And it just now came out that them, that shits don't do nothing. Wait, it's, so what does it do when you're putting it in your body? Is it just a placebo effect? I have no idea, but it's, 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 it's uh, it doesn't do anything, mm. and it's been around for for Very years. Cool. Mm -hmm. Love that for us. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, they make so much money by keeping people sick. What uh, other industries do you think are bullshit? Mm. So many. I don't know. I'm just thinking about the medical field right now. But, I mean, not the medical field. Shout out doctors. We love you. We appreciate you. But 
I don't know. There's a lot of systems that are fucked up. Mm. I mean, our government. What do you think about the Catholic Church? Mm, I think they have a lot of problems, but I don't really know much about them. Yeah, they're they like little boys. That's what I would say about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you have any? Do you have anything to say about uh? What what, what do you think is going on? And um, well, do you have anything to say about? <laughs> <laughs> Like this war that's going on in, yeah, in Israel. Man. Are you a history type of girl? No, I need to get better. Mm. But I mean, I just, I was think, actually thinking about this on the drive over. I mean, you're just, uh, where's, your, where's, your, where's your family from? Uh, I don't know. Like when they look at your genes and your DNA, like what? Are, I don't know. I think I have some shame around what I think it could be because uh and so I don't know but I th- I don't know I think my family's German I don't mm. I'm not sure I think my uncle has like the genealogy I've just never looked at it so but I, I don't know for sure mm. so I'll find that out for you mostly for myself but. please do um No, I mean, I was thinking about that on the way over here. I feel like, you know, I'm 31, but the amount of wars or just, yeah, crisis that I feel like we've seen or I've seen, just like clearly war is not solving anything. So like, and just the amount amount of money, resources, (laughs) I don't know. What do you feel about Biden just approved fourteen billion dollars to send over there? Yeah, I wish he wouldn't have done that. Mm. Think? I think I do think what's happening right now is like I mean, I think about on a human being level, like if if like I were in that situation, I hope to God somebody would try to be like coming for me and coming for my town, my city, and the fact that the people are just trapped there and Do you think the US but their noses in other countries' business? I mean, I think sometimes, but I also think that there's they're always trying to protect themselves, so it's never like there's always something else happening behind the scenes. Mm. Like, yeah. It's like they... Yeah, I don't... Like, um... <laughs> hmm... Yeah, it's complicated, but I wish that he wouldn't have sent. I wish he wouldn't have done that. It's actually not complicated. Stay out of their business. That's simple. No, no. Fourteen I mean it's, billion dollars. No, I mean it's use compl- that fourteen billion dollars <laughs> about the shit that's going on in America. There's so much shit that fourteen I mean, yeah. billion dollars can solve in America itself. Why the fuck are you sending fourteen billion dollars over there to a country that you know good and goddamn well? They're still going to fight. This shit has been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. This is just not no new new thing that just popped up. Right. Yeah. No, and I was saying it was complicated in the sense that I feel like the relationship of, like, yeah, them sending money or not sending money and, like, trying to, like, again, protect themselves. It's like they make, they're making it complicated. But, no, yeah, stay out of the business. Mm. Are you a nosy person? Mm, yes and no. I find great joy in minding my own business, but I also find great joy in eavesdropping on someone's conversation. You know, there's a lot going on. Are you the girl who their friends go for advice? Mm, sometimes. Mm. Actually, yes. And sometimes I'm like, not sure. It's just the blind leading the blind out here. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. How do you feel about... I don't know if you saw this, but uh, did you have you heard about that list that uh, women put out about not to go on first dates or don't take me? And it was like Cheesecake Factory, mm. Alfred Drinks, uh, bowling, a sport event. 
It was a whole long list. Have oh, you I seen didn't that? See this. No. Uh-huh. Have you heard about it? I mean, you saying this, I'm like, okay, I can. So yeah, basically, just. there's is this list that females put out in a circle in social media, and it has a list of all these places to not take a girl on a first date or places that women will not go on first dates. And there was a sh- bunch of shit on the list. I'm like, yo, this sh- like a sporting event. You want to go to an NBA game or yeah. out for drinks? Like you wouldn't. So it was, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a the cheesecake factory was like one big, cause everyone was making a big deal out of the cheesecake factory. <laughs> uh, where, is a place that you will not even consider being taken on a mm. first date. Another place was Applebee's, like TGI Fridays. Mine is like, I would say my number one is the movies. Why the hell are you taking me to the movies on a first date? Mm-hmm. No. Like, Explain. we can't talk. We are spending time together, but like, we I don't even know if I want to be spending time with you because I don't know if I like you. Like, Don't take me to the movies. We're not even looking at each other. Like, that's a weird, a weird first date Mm. to me. So why would he? (laughs) (laughs) You're thinking about all the first dates you've taken to movies? No, I never took a girl on a first. uh, First of all, I don't even, uh, I don't do that first date shit. Like Why? Because why would I? uh, So basically what I'm saying is why would someone take you to dinner on a first date then? Because just like you said, you don't know if you... Well, like, this, like this okay. person or not. So why why thing. am I sitting at a dinner table with you? If oh, okay. I don't, if I don't even That's know. the way we're going to play this. This is why like dating it. is so fucking toxic is because people think it's all like, oh, well, what's, what am I worth? What is this worth? And you, apparently you don't know. That's why you're going to find out. And yeah. it's like. What I do is I'm like, yo, let's go out for some drinks. And that's it. Okay. But you're not you're not doing dinner. Here's my thing with dinner. We both gotta eat anyways. Why not? Yeah, girls just use that to just try to get a fucking meal. That's all them girls. But dinner, I'll say, take a, I'll take girls to dinner after the fact. Like when I when I realize like yo, I want to actually. Okay, but I will this say person. this: that half more than half the time, the effort and the money that. I think women have put into their appearance for the day is well over what the meal or whatever costs. So I do feel in a sense that it's. What are you talking about? The effort. Like. First of all, guys don't give a fuck about all the makeup you got on and all that and all that shit. Well, that's one thing. Second of all, second of all, that it doesn't because I dress well, you owe me. No, no, I'm not saying you owe, but I'm just saying, I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, you don't know what you're saying. Well, I'm saying, I'm trying to think of two different things, but I'm also, mm, I don't know. Mm. But I just hate that I, yeah. You just hate what? That so much of dating feels like you're just trying to like, Make sure, like, yeah, your t- like your time isn't wasted, and you're. I don't know what you're even saying, like the like whole like worth it thing, and it's just like I don't know. I just yeah, that's why you just go out for a drink. Honestly, I you love gotta a good you gotta one. think. Just go. Oh, well, let's go to this bar. Meet me at the bar. First of all, I'll meet you. Meet me. I'm not picking you up. <laughs> Because if we ain't vibing, you I need go, to get you, out of yeah, there. You can go your way, I can go mine. That's why For we sure. that's why we're meeting there, first of all. Sure. Second of all, uh like when you go out to dinner, right? Most people when they go out to dinner, they usually just be drinking at the at dinner anyway. Okay. So and then when you're out at a bar or whatever or a lounge. Um, I mean, alcohol is going to like loosen you up. So you're going to be talking more freely mm-hmm. and shit like that. And then, yeah, that's, that's, that's how I get down. Like vibe off a couple of drinks and talk. And then if it's cool, then yeah. And the next time we'll go out for dinner. Yeah, I think that's fine. I just don't like sitting at a dinner. I just don't like sitting at a dinner table with some 
new chick that I just don't even know. And then through that conversation, I realized like like this girl is a duck. Or hell, even if you, before you order your food, you're like, oh shit, I don't want to be doing this. But then you exactly. have to order a whole food, a whole meal. Exactly. Now I got to sit there looking at you. I'm also assuming you're saying you- stupid shit. Okay. She's not looking at you thinking the same thing. No, that, that's impossible. Oh, please. <laughs> please. Okay, but I'm also assuming you're, like, you've had no real interaction with this person. Like, this is a dating app person. Because sometimes when you meet people IRL, you kind of know the vibe. Mm. I mean, you don't know, no, but. Mm-hmm. And even if you have a vibe with someone, that getting them in a different situation, they could be a different mm. person. Yeah. But I don't know. Mm. I do like a good beach date, a good walking on the beach date. Who doesn't love that? Your nature, it's beautiful. You can walking talk. on the beach. Are you against physical exercise? No, I have no problem with that. That's well, you do have a problem right now with your broken leg. Yeah, that is true. But walking on the beach, that's that lasts what an hour. Then what are you gonna do? How long are drinks lasting? Probably like four hours. Four hours. You mm-hmm. might as well go to dinner. You, you, you're meeting at like 10 o'clock and then you're, you're going to be there at least till like 1, 2, till the shit closes. I you are not asking me on a date because I can't do 10 p.m. I'm in bed. I'm talking about going out for drinks <laughs> on, a, like a, like on a, a weekend. Bi- okay, fine. Who doesn't like a 4 p.m. drink time? Well, that tells me you're an alcoholic. What? Who the fuck is drinking at 4 o'clock in the afternoon? I'm like in a gym at four o'clock. I mean, sucks to so be you're in an that situation. <laughs> <laughs> you're an alcoholic. I actually don't drink. You don't drink nothing. Well, Not anymore. I mean, yeah. if a really good cocktail is on the menu, I might have it. But for the most part, I'm not drinking. Mm, why is that? I mean, I just... Bad experience I'm having? I I mean, yeah, I was having some really severe reactions. I would have like one or two drinks and then be like very, very sick. So I just, at that point, was like, oh, my health is more important than feeling drunk or having a drink. And then I went a year and a half without having a single drop of alcohol and it was like the best I'd ever felt. And so... I've kind of adopted that still into my life. Yeah, I always told myself I was going to, when I turned 40, that I was going to stop doing a lot of stuff. I said I was going to be a vegan. How'd that go for you? I said I was going to stop drinking. How'd that go for you? It didn't go well because I I wasn't able to do none of that. Why do you feel like you weren't able to do it? Uh, I mean, I don't know, it's hard. It's a hard... uh, like stop, stop uh, eliminating anything from your life when you've been doing it your whole life. Yeah, it's very hard to do. But when you get on the other side of that like break, it is the most empowering thing to realize that like you like that thing doesn't control you, and that yeah. you then have the freedom of choice to choose it when you want to, not because you feel like you have to or you always have. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, I mean, I only drink once a week, and oh, I'm not. I hate the taste of alcohol, so I would never. Then why, I already, do, you, then why do you drink if you don't even like it? Well, I, I'm a social drinker. You know, okay. I just I drink. I only drink if I'm like out, mm. at like an event or like a club or something. I just don't sit around and and drink. Yeah. And then I and I started drinking at a late age. How old were you when you started drinking? I took my first sip of alcohol when I was 23. Okay. Mm. What was your first drink? A Smirnoff Ice. Which kind? The, uh, you know those fucking, they're like, I don't know if you call them beers or whatever. Like the clear, yeah. I'm not talking about the Smirnoff Ice vodka. I'm talking about the, Mm. I don't know, it's kind of like a seltzer or a beer or something. It's hard to explain. Well, yeah, I don't know if I've had it, but the Smirnoff Ice, the like lemonade ones, oof, straight sugar, but it's so good. Mm-hmm. So good. You know what else is good? Those Bud Light Lime Aritas. No. no. <laughs> Bud Light is disgusting. Bud Light, Coors Light. Well, if I drink beer, Bud Light is the beer I drink. Mm. Or Blue Moon. 
because they're okay. Blue Moon's not bad. They're like light. They're light, light beers. Yeah. And I hate the taste of beer. Mm. But uh, yeah. Good to know. Uh-huh. Is there anything else uh, you want to tell the world about yourself? I mean, there's lots to say. There's not enough time tonight. <laughs> um, no, I do feel the need, even though there are racist people in the town I live in. There's a lot of good people, and you there you cannot. Uh, what is it? You cannot um, try to convince the world. I'm not that your town is good. No, I'm not. But your town is a racist town, old Western town, probably. I don't know, but I do want to shout out the good people there. That there really, is no, there is no good people there. There are good people. Everyone there is racist. Not everyone. What's the name of the town again? Nope. <laughs> Look back in the show notes. <laughs> Do you still have friends there that you grow with? Yeah, of course. Friends. People family. who've never left the town that are just still there? Yeah. A lot of people. I mean, a lot of people thought I was crazy for moving to San Francisco. Mm. Um, but I'm sure I probably would have got that reaction if I moved. You know, are your hours. brothers and sisters still there? My sister is, and then my brother, my brother's not. Mm. Yeah. What do you guys get together like on Thanksgiving and shit? So we do. This is the thing about being the single person in your family is like you kind of have to. You're the one that can like bounce back and forth, mm. but you just don't really get to be all together. So my siblings and I were together for Thanksgiving last year, <laughs> and then I'll be with my sister, her kids, and my dad for Christmas this year. But my brother. And my sister-in-law and my baby niece are going to be here this week. So I'll get to see them. This is their first time being in San Francisco? Yeah. And I'm really scared because I know my brother does not like cities. Mm. But. What part of the city do you live? I'm like in the mission. I think it's going to be like a culture shock for them. Well, I'm just going to like try to take him to the like all the calm parts. And I'm really going to win him over because I'm going to take him to a Warriors game. Mm, He's a Warrior fan? No, he loves the NBA. He loves basketball. Okay. So he will be very excited. Mm. What game are you taking him to? The one on Saturday. Who are they playing? Cleveland? No. I don't know. I don't know. So you got tickets already? I haven't got them yet. Uh, Good luck with that. I need to get them. I just (laughs) looked the other night. They're still available. How, how, I mean, I'm talking about price-wise. I mean, we're going to sit in the nosebleeds and still pay a good amount, but yeah, it's fine. Mm. Do you like uh, your nieces? Oh, yeah. I love kids. I love them. I love... I feel like my nephew came into the world at a time for me where I really needed... Like, he came at a really bad time for me, mm-hmm. but made a lot of things good, and then... Yeah. Came at a time for you? Like, it's your kid? Exactly. No. Um, But yeah, him and my two nieces, I love so much. How come you don't have kids? Uh, I really want to have a baby with a partner. and A partner or a husband? I mean, I'd love for, to be a husband, but partner. How old are you? 31. Mm. I'll be 32 in a couple weeks. Are you able to have kids? Yeah. Checked everything? Mm. You are 31. Yeah. Time is ticking. I know. That's the thing, though. It's like, yeah, I want, I would like to have a kid, but I'm not, like, I'm not, that's not my number one thing I'm running after right now. And if it happens the way I would like, then great. But if not, then, like, I'm not going to do it. Mm. Would you adopt? Sure. I'm open to it. Freeze your eggs? No. You think you're going to get married? I want to, but I don't know. That's the thing. It's like marriage isn't the... I mean, marriage is a goal I would like to uh, like have, but not enough to like just get married. Like It's got to be... 
Do you think you'll be a good wife? Yeah. Why? Because I'm a really great person. And <laughs> honestly, I just, oh I really God. value part companionship and partnership. And I Why really, would you be a good wife? I'm getting there. Please have some patience. Mm. My God. But I don't know. I think I, I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of love to give. Oh. Stop. That was fake. That don't tell me shit. What do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? Be like, oh, I'm a great cook. I'll just cook for my husband and clean and do all the things. Yes. That's not what makes a good wife necessarily. That can be saying part you of have it. an. Uh, I have a lot of love to give. That means I, that, that you're not what? really giving me a chance to answer. You're sh- you're cutting down everything I have to say. Because I mean, because it seems like you're anti marriage. Are you anti marriage? Yes. You hate kids. Yes. So you never want to be married. No. You and you don't want kids. No. Why? You just want to be alone? Yes. You don't even want to be a, with a partner? No, I want, I want to have the option of if I want company, mm. to get company. And then I want that company to leave because I like being by myself. <laughs> After the, the company has gave what it needed to give. Mm. But... And kids, I don't, uh, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a kid, uh, type of guy. Do you have kids in your life at all? No. Like none of your friends have kids. You don't have I mean, all my friends have kids. But you're like, fuck them kids. Don't bring them around me. Exactly. Okay. It's all, has always been like that with kids and marriage. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. When have you, when you see people who are married, right? Mm -hmm. Do they look happy? Sometimes, no. yes. They're just, toler- they're just tolerating no. each other. But also, let's be honest, like there is so much of a shared commitment that is marriage between bills, kids. I mean. It's just a fucking business contract. That's all it is. Yeah, for some people, for sure. Definitely. And then when you look at single men, they look happy. Enjoying them li- their but life. I'm I sorry, just went to Thailand. You looked at single women. They I just are looked at th- thriving, living their best life, looking their best. Yeah, but those women don't want to be single. Some do. Deep down inside, they want that one man that they can be with and or rely woman, and rely you know. on or whatever. But yeah, I just went uh, when I was in Thailand. There was Thailand was full of old men. Just living their best life with all these young ass fucking Thai girls and shit. Okay, these that's nigga, a whole other conversation. These niggas are retired. Like, yeah. I just I met this dude out there. He was in his I think like sixties, probably like close to seventies. And he uh, he's a he was an engineer for like uh, this oil company right in Texas. Huge ass house, big ass house. Like four or five story house. Um, kids were already grown. He had all these fancy cars. He had money, mm-hmm. and he was. We were talking, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm. I'm selling all my shit, and I'm buying a. So he's gonna go from that big house, and he's gonna buy uh like a little small one bedroom condo out there. And he's like, "Yeah, I don't need. I don't need this big huge house. It's just me by myself, right?" And he's living like a king in Thailand. Because, I mean, Thailand, I don't know if you've ever been there. It's cheap as fuck out there. It's on my list. And, um, yeah, they love these old men. They retire, and then they move out there and live like kings with all these fucking young-ass girls on their laps and shit all the time. And they're happy as happy as can be. Are they really, though? Hell yeah. I've seen it. That just seems like cheap, like... And then you take, on the other hand, you take these men who are in the United States, married, don't even have sex with their wives anymore. Wife won't even give them no pussy. (laughs) (laughs) He's walking around mad. He's walking past her. She's breathing. He gets mad at her just for breathing. (laughs) They're arguing all the time. Kids are annoying. He don't even like his kids. He's looking at his son. He's like, this nigga can't even play sports. What, what what are we doing? So yeah. It's, it's <laughs> so basically what I hear you saying is 
You're going to move to Thailand and live like a king. No, I'm not moving to Thailand. Yet. I want like the option. Years. I want the option to be able. That's the other thing about being single. You have oh, the, the you can travel. Is beautiful. Like, yeah, I don't got to answer to nobody. Mm-hmm. The freedom is so beautiful. Um. Yeah, it's kind of fun. You can kind of do whatever you want. You don't have to consult anybody. Um. Yeah, it's pretty fun. How long have you been single? Oof. For a bit. What's a bit? Years? Mm, yeah, like a couple of years. <clears throat> That's telling. What does that even mean? What is it about you that is keeping you single? Um, I think partly... I mean, like I said, <sighs> I'm serious. After my mom died, it just blew up my entire world. You know, it was like... Just the even concept of getting close to people. I was like, what's the point? Like, what's the point of loving people? Because like, okay, they're, you're just going to love them and then they die. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, I guess the alternative is that you're just like, you don't have any friends and you're like, die alone. And I'm like, oh, well. But I don't know. I think enduring that kind of like pain after losing someone I love so much, it just really like, I kind of put some things in perspective for me and just being like, oh shit, like, can I do, could I keep, can I, can I do this? So you're telling me you're, you've been single because you are scared of falling for someone and then falling in love with someone and then losing that love or not even love, but just, just feeling lost. I think, yeah, that's mm. a piece of it. It's a big piece of it. But um, yeah, I think I am you know, need to get over some of that stuff. Why did you and your, um, well, that, your ex, whoever did the last relationship you were in, why did that not work out? We just weren't on the same page about what we wanted. What did you want? I wanted to be together and he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know. What do you, uh, I mean, but you guys were together. So what do you mean? Like you wanted marriage, he didn't? No, I just wanted it to be more like. Would he cheat on you? That's what you mean? No, it was just like. A, it was. I mean, it basically all just boils down to like when. Like, you need words and actions to match up. And, like, he'd be saying one thing, and then it was, like, doing something else. And it was, like, okay, clearly you don't mean what you say. So after a few times of that, you have to, like, look at take it out for face value and be, like, hey, this is, like, you're obviously not serious. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm done. How long were you guys ago? Mm, I think it was just, like, a year, a little over a year. It was the longest relationship you ever been in? Just, like, a year and a half. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do you find that bizarre, a woman that's 30 years old in the longest relationship you've been in was a year? I don't, but I'm aware, mm. by the way, you're asking the question that you or others may what, may think that it is bizarre. I do think for a long time, I mean, God, honestly, dating just was not on my radar. Like, I was just doing other stuff. And then, I mean, in college, yeah, I like, dated and honestly it was like after like a year with this like an asshole I was like why am I doing this when I can like be with my friends having fun Mm -hmm. so that was kind of like college I was just like okay like no one really seemed to really catch my attention and then I was like okay like after college and then after college my entire life blew up and so it wasn't really the most sexy time to be dating when my mom was like sick. It was like, I just didn't have anything to give mm. and I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to go out on dates. I didn't, it just, it was, there was a lot going on and it was just like, I don't also what am I like, well, I live with my parents, one of which is has terminal cancer and um, yeah, you want to come hang out with my family? <laughs> like I felt like in that time, like, even though at first I didn't think my mom was really, really going to die, but then I reached a point where I was like, okay, that she is going to die. I just felt like I, I wanted to be spending time with, like, with her. And, like, 
be spending time with my family together because I knew that time was going to be over. So I was like, why am I going to go on dates with dudes who might just waste my time and who knows, take Mm. me to fucking get a drink. (laughs) So Mm. I don't know. I mean, I went on like a couple of dates, but it was just like, eh. Um, I don't want to keep talking about your mother, right? But is there anything that you wish that you could have said? Like, I mean, when my father died, I mean, I didn't really know anything about his, like, life mm-hmm. as, a, as a kid or, or just a him, p- period, right? How old, was he, how old were you when your dad died? How old was I? I, was, I think I was 24. What happened to your dad? Uh, he just, I don't know. He just, I think he died from alcoholism. He went to bed, didn't wake up. Oh, uh, he was old as fuck, so. How old? He was 80, I think he died at 84. How old was your dad when you were born? 64? I don't know. The nigga was old. Yeah. Yeah, but he looked young. Well, anyway. We never, like, had a talk. I never asked him about, oh, what was it like when you were growing up and all this other stuff, right? So there's a whole bunch of shit. Well, not even a whole bunch of shit. Everything. I don't know anything about my my dad's life as a a youth or as a young adult or anything. I don't. I didn't, never met his parents. Mm. The only person I met on his side of the family was his brother. And we only met once when he took us on, like, a road trip to, like, Kansas City. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, that's one thing I regret not actually, like, talking to him and shit like that. So was is there anything that you regret um, after your mom passed? Like, oh, damn, I wish I would have knew or asked this or whatever. I mean, God, I just always wish for more time with her. But I'm really happy to say that when my mom died, we were at the best place that we'd ever been in our relationship and that I... I mean, I just, I knew, I I knew that we were running out of time. And so I did as much as I could to kind of capture some of that. Mm. But no, we talked about, I mean, of course, there's always more things I wish I would have done, but, or asked, but yeah. no, we had like, we had all the talks I think I wanted. I mean, and she was really like gracious to me just to be like having the conversation around like, you know, what does it feel to be dying? What does it feel like to, you know, those kind of things because she really was in a unique situation that I I haven't ever talked to somebody about before. And so she was always very generous in her in giving her time and response to me. Mm. But no, I was like very close with my mom. So but we grew up. Yeah, my mom my mom was a big part of my life. Yeah. Do you have any advice um for anyone? That wants to get into photography? Hmm. I think... And when I say advice, because I hate when I ask this question (laughs) (laughs) about giving advice and people are like, oh, just don't ever give up. Like, we don't want to hear all that. Oh, I was going to say I want to hear some like real, like, if you want to start a business, you have to do this. Like, that's the type of advice I like to hear. Well, I was going to say my first piece of advice is like your work is going to suck. Like it's probably not going to be good and you just got to keep going until you like figure out your own style, figure out what like how you like to shoot. Also, I would just like to say this point that just because we all have cameras does not mean we are all photographers. I do think there (laughs) (laughs) a lot of people think they're a photographer and they're not, but Mm. that's the piece of like, actually know like know some of your shit like know why why things are the way they are or how your camera works yeah learn how to shoot in manual mode that's like my number one best piece of advice because gives you the most light control and that's when you really can start making your shit look the way you want is when you control the different elements um and honestly get a mentor Mm -hmm. get a mentor because that is very helpful. Do you do when you take pictures? Do you do you, do you do a lot of uh, what do you call it? post processing? E- yeah, editing or whatever the fuck. I don't do a ton. I mean, I have my own like edits that I like do for photos, but I I typically 
have a pretty simple post process. If certain things needed to need to be like photoshopped out, then that happens. But typically, it's it's pretty minimal afterwards. Mm. Is there any gigs that you would never do? Mm-hmm. Like if someone said, I mean, what's the strangest thing you ever uh, took pictures of? Like someone hired you for? I mean. I haven't ever said yes to anything I didn't want to do. Well, that's not true. I wasn't excited about necessarily, but I mean, I just don't. Corporate events are not fun for me. Mm. I like photographed this like finance conference one time and it was so boring. (laughs) Probably should have tuned into some of the content more, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't for me. Would you ever do like nudes? I've done that. You trying what to book a shoot? No, no. Why not? I have, I have stage fright. Eh, I'd make you feel comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I love that. I think it's such a special space to be invited into, and I'm always really honored when people... Actually, I photograph births. That's, like, a very honoring space to be in. But, mm. uh, no, I mean, yeah, creating art with people in their most vulnerable state is really amazing and i'd love to do more of that Mm. what's your dream job i would like to like be a creative director kind of be able to have my hands on all things but uh working on sets working Mm. with i'd love to do a music video shoot an album cover like that stuff would be dream come true Mm. you know how to video edit and all that no I mean, loosely, but we got some learning to do. Yeah. All right. Well, tell the people where they can find you. Okay. You guys can find me at Gretchen Robards Photo, G R E T C H E N R O B as in boy, A R D as in dog, S. I should make a shorter handle, but I've tried and there aren't good names available. Um, And then. You can go check out my website, GretchenRobards.com, but you'll see a lot of photos of weddings. So um working on updating that, but mm. those are where my things live for right now. Okay. And that's where, uh, that's like the best place to, it's like someone wanted to book you. That's the best place to go? Yeah. Or just be friends, chat. Yeah. All right. Well, Gretchen, uh, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Jordan. Thanks for tell, telling the millions and millions of <laughs> people about your life. Yeah, hopefully. You have any last words? No, just thanks for having me and can't wait for next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Everyday Celebrity Podcast, and we are out. You.